Hi guys, hello Mary Meet. Everybody, it's Miss Shumbri. It's only it's December 5th, 2019. Today we're going to cover a couple things. Um, first is why I didn't do a vlog at the soup kitchen this morning. Um, the main reason was I didn't want to bring my little tripod. And, and the second reason was... Um, they had the radio on a little extra loud, and I've already gotten warnings from YouTube regarding music in the videos before. And, um, even though the music in this case was situational, it had nothing to do with me, I said, no, we're not going to go there. And so I decided instead that we would talk about, um, things here at home instead of at the soup kitchen. Now, I have a couple of things I'm gonna cover. First thing is is like out on the wire says you jump around from topic to topic to topic. And I without really being sarcastic, but actually was being kind of sincere, I say I fight in the world of Warcraft the same way. And the reason I do that in the world of Warcraft jump around is so that the mo so that the um the assailant I'm fighting can't easily get in a good shot. Um so that the assailant is basically is fighting a moving target. If you're not a moving target, you're a dead one. Okay, I tested this out earlier last night in the game. When I first kind of got back on the game, I hadn't played um, the kill in a while. And unfortunately, I tried one approach of don't move, just cast spell after spell after spell after spell after spell. Heal, heal, shield, heal, shield, whatever. And all of a sudden, I kept dying. <laughs> and so obviously, to say jumping around is bad, is incorrect. I used to watch a lot of Xena. And Xena, uh, Warrior, Prince, Warrior Princess did the same thing. Lucy Lawless would jump around her target. She didn't just stay in there and just use her sword and do the frontal attack. She would do also melee attacks too. Uh, so she actually had to do that jumping around. It was because you don't want to make it easy for you to become a target for um, the assailant to cut you down. And the same reason I use the same style in my art, in my discussions, is so that you guys can't just go, oh, she's talking about this, oh, change, or just skip ahead five minutes, and then she'll be talking about the next topic, and then skip ahead five minutes later, or she'll be talking about another topic. Sometimes the topics are so intertwined that they have to be addressed, like jumping around, because they're all interconnected. And I do want to cover a couple of um, World of Warcraft topics. So let's let's cover them right now, and then we'll talk about other things. Number one. The subscription sales for World of Warcraft Classic as of November 2019 has outsold retail for subscriptions. Now, I happen to play both retail and classic, and I have no problem with classic. Actually, I like classic better than retail for a lot of reasons. The only reason I'm playing retail is I can play my favorite race, the Blood Elves. And I can't play the Blood Elves in Classic because there is no Blood Elf. There's no, there are High Elves, um, but they're not playable. There's Night Elves, the creepy, oh God, they're creepy. But on the, the Horde side, there's, really nothing that I really would want to play. Maybe Torin. I did play Torin for a while. That was fine. I didn't mind Torin. Undead, no thank you. Trolls, 
No. Um, I forgot what the other race was. But um, in the World of Warcraft Classic, for most popular race, Horde is undead. Okay. Torrin is okay as well, but it's it's not as popular as the undead. Um, the I mentioned the night El the, or the blood elves and the high elves because one of the questions that came up and it keeps coming up over and over again is what about the high elves that did not come to resurrect or to the aid of their um, silver moon brethren that were being defeated and in the scourge why are they not being played as la playable races well i don't know um i guess blizzard thought oh we'll give you void elves and said that creepy is hot i wouldn't want to play a void elf no thank you I'm sorry. I'm very much like my blood elf counterpart, Bikella. In every way. If you ever... If you go, all you need to do is stick some ears on me and basically you can visualize me as being a high elf. There's uh, there's no doubt about it. There, um, and actually, I am going to be buying some elven ears. Um, latex elvish ears uh, for cosplay. But uh, that's... They're not that expensive. They're like, they're like eight bucks. <laughs> you know, so... You can have your elvish ears. You can even have the um, high elf priestess outfit, dress outfit, if you will, um, for about two hundred bucks, custom made. If it's your thing, just like I could get the Elsa outfit custom made. If I had the money to burn, I don't. Okay, I. Um, that's the next topic. Is going to be. What's going on with the budget? Because I actually have to bring this up. Um, I still have about 160 in its savings account. Well, actually, I actually have 180 now because I put $20 in this month. And the biggest concern that I have right now is that my landlord hasn't yet come up and pick up his rent. I left him a voicemail. I told him, I said, I have your check. You just got to come by and get it, like he usually does. I mean, it's more than likely he's with his family. He still probably come hasn't come back from holiday yet or something. I don't know. Usually he's here right now. Trust me. I know my landlord. When he smells money, he comes running. And he knows I have it. So he knows that he doesn't have to worry about setting on evictions or anything because he knows I have the rent. Um, I mean, I've been doing this rent thing with him for 14 plus years, and he knows how it works. And in fact, as far as I know, I'm the only tenant he accepts checks from. They, nobody else in the building pays him a check. They pay him by money order, or they pay him by um, cash. I told many of the tenants, do not pay with cash. Because if you don't, he doesn't give rent receipts all the time. And if you don't get rent receipts, you are going to be looking for one for DSS or whatever. So that means I would recommend paying by money order. At least he gets guaranteed money, you get a receipt, and everybody's happy. Um, likewise, I get a receipt from my bank, which tells me that he has, the check is cleared, the check is paid, I got information in my check statements, everybody's happy. Oh, yeah, so the cat. We'll get to you in a second, Fame. Um, now, this month, we also have to deal with getting more kitty food. Come here. Now I can give you some attention. You can see that Mr. Cat here has gotten back his fur. Yeah. And he's been eating a lot of canned cat food and so is Rusty. Rusty needs to get a Nutrisystem Retreat Great. Not this cat. He's, he's, he's okay. He's not too bad. But Rusty is so big. He's so heavy. I I mean, really? He's heavy. Um, so, yeah, he's... This cat... He, he's, yeah, I know, his tail's weird. 
and don't assume why it is like that. It's always just the winter time. Usually summertime it poops out more normal. Um, but then this year he had been very sick this summer, so he didn't really. Um, he almost died, I think. He was so skinny and so bony. He's not so bony anymore. He's filled out nice for him. He's a healthier looking cat now. And um, his ear is still a mess. Ugh. Okay, um, so obviously he still needs to get some more food. And I'm going to have to order my supplies from Walmart today. I can order them tomorrow, but i got to do blood work tomorrow. So, I figure if I order the cat food today, <coughs> we can have the cat supplies here by Monday or Tuesday. And that may sound silly, but the truth is, um, that works out fine. But I do have to get the cats back on there, the dry cat food. Um, the canned food's okay, but it's, it's really not good for him. To eat all of that canned food. Of course, it's good for his stomach in a sense because he hasn't been peaking up as much. But, um, of course, at his age, 18, going on 19 years, yeah, he can definitely benefit from the softer food because it's easier for him to chew. The sad truth is, is the pate that you guys have been eating is sold out. So I have to find something different. Now, I like the pate because it comes out as one chunk out of the can. They are selling the chunky food. They have that in stock. But then you have to basically scrape it out, and it's not as conveniently easy for me. Um, so just basically flip the can into a dish and go, done. <laughs> I know. You see, to me, it's... It's all you feeling about me. Basically, put over zip open the can and throw it in the dish and walk away. How ungrateful! Um, <laughs> I do what you gotta do to be easy, and sometimes that's the easiest way to do it. Um. So the next thing is the issue of where. Uh, how did we do yesterday with the people of peace impromptu live stream? We did very well. We had a lot of regulars that came in. A lot of people enjoyed the show on Lemmy's channel. Plus, it was streaming on the Welcome to My World channel. Plus, it was streaming on Twitch. Plus, it was streaming on Mixer. And so people had gotten the chance to enjoy it. It was a major, major success at reaching out to a large audience. And Facebook. I forgot about Facebook. So people had enjoyed that. The live streaming of the games, they do have their audience appeal. Um, I'm not going to lie. Not everybody enjoys them. Like Sue Blevins had said, the games are slow. It's not, it's not high action. No, it's not. World of Warcraft is not a high action game. And it will never be. Because it is a game that is more of a strategy game. Originally started out as a card game you can play. Like um, um, Mystic the Gathering name was. Um, the Gathering game, card game. Well, World of Warcraft started out as a card game too. So, it became a video game about 2000 and... Oh, let's just say it. Some of the early history of it started around 2004 but as a video game. But that's 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 all go there. The, the thing here that makes the World of Warcraft game fun for me has nothing to do with going out there and killing enemies. I mean, that's part of the game, okay? You're going to do it. There are days that someone else has got you in their sights and that they're going to waste you. And, and <laughs> it doesn't matter. If, as I play a horde blood elf, or if I play my alliance characters, Vanya, which is a warrior, and Bashara, which is a priest, 
you are still basically um, have the uh, certain powers. The only thing is, I'm going to be honest when I say this. Modern WoW versus classic WoW. Which is better? Well, let me say this. Which is better depends on what you're looking for. Because modern WoW has a little bit faster pace. You don't have to worry about man and starvation. Ask my characters as a priestess in classic WoW. She can throw all the the pain she wants at people, but I have heard her complain saying, I need more mana, I need more mana, I need more mana, and then I have to stop, then I have to eat a bread, or I have to drink a, a, a mineral water, and then basically then I can go back and it, attack with more pain balls. That is absolutely, of course, that's realistic. Whereas Michaela has got almost like a semi-automatic. She can go out there, she, if she gets hit, she hits heal. But she has to pause. Hit heal, hit heal, hit heal, hit heal, hit heal. You know, to decrease the, uh, the damage done by the assailant. I have to tell you, if you want one, a game that's going to make you have to think more carefully on supplies, yeah, classic, what was it? If you just simply want to have a equivalent of unlimited bullets and not have to worry about going to the merchant to reload a mana or bread or food or water, yeah, modern wall is for you. It doesn't mean you can't eat bread. It doesn't mean you can't drink, you can't drink water. Of course you can. Hell, sometimes Bikila happens to land on top of ice cold glasses of milk. She'll drink them right there on the spot. Never mind, sell them. I think like yesterday she was so, I mean, if she was literally playing classic WoW, she would have needed every single glass of milk or every single mineral water or every single tough bread she would have had because you're dealing with a game that takes energy out of you and it's got to be replenished somewhere. Um... So yes, I like Classic Wall because it's based on a little more realistic reality of what happens to you when you're playing a game. That you're going to be basically whipped. You're tired. You have been fighting mobs. You have been going after assailants. And, you know, it wears you down. Your legs hurt. I'm surprised they don't have a pain threshold in the game. That'd be an interesting factor to throw in. Pain threshold. Not be able to just induce pain, but uh, to assail it, but just from walking and running and striking and the pain in your muscles and your back and everything else in your body. But as far as I know, that's not any of the game. That's under stamina. And the thing is, is it still takes its toll on you. Okay? This is the nature. Um, but on the other hand, I don't like Battle for Azeroth's version of what they did to um, Northshire. What the hell happened to the mine? What happened to the vineyards? The vineyards are burning. The mine is boarded up. I used to love to go in the mine, just earn my, you know, my leveling. Just so I could level and go for kibold, kibold workers and laborers constantly. And just go after them one after the other after the other after the other. Because that's how I learned my melee attacks. And now, Bashara doesn't have access to that. She can't learn that technique because the mine has got a big steel door in front of it and you can't go in. And so she has to go into the vineyards, which is fine, okay? She's learned some melee attacks in the vineyards. But the truth is, is why are the vineyards burning? Well, I don't understand that, okay? 
what has going on here about Frazeroth? That's weird. Um, it was really weird. I, I'm not, I'm not impressed with it. Sorry, Blizzard. You really got to explain this to me. And also, somebody said, well, I want to see, um, you know, the set high elves as an alliance race. And then they said, well, that's fine. But I'm still blood elf and I'm still horde. So if I see an alliance high elf, you're still going to get a stiletto to your ribs. No, guys, unfortunately, number one, you basically burned us. Eh, makes sense, right? It would be within character. They did. They burned us. They did not come back and help defend Silver Moon. They actually stayed with their alliance buddies, and they actually joined in ransacking the Blood Elf culture. Um, so, yeah. I mean, I would legitimately point out is, yeah, you're going to get a to the rips. Because that's what you did to us. And I can bet you anything that they're saying the same thing. Well, if we become a playable high elf race, you're going to get stilettos to the rips. Well, okay, fine. That's, that's, that's playing a high elf game. Okay, we'll see what happens. I don't... If Alliance wants to play High Elf, that's fine. But uh, Blood Elves are going to still rightfully, you know, defend what we believe. And in the lore, we have a reason to be pissed. Okay. Um, next topic is what is going on with the weather. Now, I haven't been keeping up with everything with the weather because I've been so busy working with the, the World of Warcraft stuff. But let me tell you what I do now. The weather is coming up. I'm going to have to start getting ready to focus more on my winter work. But what I'm already seeing is is that a lot of people this year have suffered a lot of damage to crops because of excessive rain or excessive cold. And then, of course, the snows that came early to the Midwest had obviously had done a number on many uh, growing cycles for many farmers they couldn't get the crops out of the field in time and it's not just the United States it is um, all the world and all the growing regions of the world have been affected to some extent so yeah you know you're going to see more crop damage and it's certainly going to result in higher prices in the market I have already seen the higher prices at the market um, it's how much of a cost of living increase from social insecurity this year? I have no idea. I didn't even get a letter yet uh, from them about the cost of living increase. So I'm going to have to find out what the cost of living increase is. I think they usually come out with a letter. Usually, I thought they came out around November, but this year I didn't get it yet. Maybe they figure you can get it online or something. <sighs> well, I can never remember my password for social insecurity. Never could remember it. Never. I keep forgetting it. So I basically just gave up trying to remember my password for social insecurity's website. I never could remember it. This is what you need to say, like LastPass or some other kind of password manager, because honestly, it doesn't help any that they don't actually work their website like other sites do. There is no way to retrieve your password directly, to my knowledge. It's there's no way to even store your password in a password keychain, so everything has to be done from memory. Oh, and they're very picky about what you use for passwords too, which makes it even harder. So because you can't store the passwords anywhere, you they will not use any of your password keychains. You can't get the information back. Same thing with the state of Connecticut's DSS website. Same problem, except at least. I can kind of recover my password, but it's just not uh, 
a very feasible, workable solution at all. So, yeah, I definitely am going to need to find a way to get the information I need for next month. Now, uh, tomorrow I go to get my blood work done. And then uh, in about on the 18th, I go to my doctor to get my checkup. And i got to be honest with you, this. I think I did lose some weight, but um, was it really a lot? I would say not really. Was it some? Yes. But it wasn't really a lot. Okay. But I'll take what I can get. Um, another thing, too, is I did order a watch band from my watch. Now, I told you and so many times, um, I have to have my watch back. I cannot live without it. I really need my watch. So I went on eBay. I found a watch band that's the right size in genuine leather and black. Because I figured with the white body of the watch and the black band, that would look really, really smart and nice. And I figured it would be nice and contrasty. And um, the watch band I bought was like 11 bucks. It's real, real leather. It's not syntho leather. It's the real deal. So, um, which means, of course, it's going to stretch as it breathes and um, it's going to, you know, Look good and everything. So that's I'm really excited about that. Oh yeah. What am I kicking over here? Oh I got four I got still got four rolls of film in here. I have to figure out what I'm gonna do with my film. I haven't even done anything on my camera lately. Oh, I haven't even edited videos lately. I just basically been shooting them and sending them out raw. Uh which is fine, but it's Ah, oh, here is Mr. Fat Ass. Oh, <laughs> oh Mr. Fat Ass Cat. You big beast. Great cat, though, but he's just so huge. Uh, he's hilarious. I have to tell you, I, I never saw a cat as big as Rusty. Rusty is enormous. I've seen dog. I have seen dogs his size, but I've never seen a cat his size. Uh, so it's looking like he seriously needs to work on his weight. Between him and him, they are both eating canned food, and they eat dry food too, and it uh, gets to be a bit annoying. But anyway. So let's get back to the other thing. So my cat's health is an issue. My health is an issue. Um, as far as the people piece interview yesterday, after that video, he was still lamenting and complaining and saying that I was being mean to him and that I was not giving him a chance to fully cover his pieces. Pop, give me a break. You have covered it. For two plus hours. Okay. There's you actually in the end accuse me of being wishy-washy between saying I'm pro-Israel, anti-Israel. I'm I never said I was pro-Israel. In every way. I there are things Israel is important for. Unfortunately, Israel in the last few years through the IDF, the Israeli Defense Forces under Benjamin Netanyahu has done some very dumb things and how they treat their um, country countries around them. And is basically is acting like a bully. And I, I mean that. It's true. Okay. And I don't support the United Nations. I really do not. I do not like the United Nations. I see the United Nations as a, um, well, uh, I said it pretty good yesterday. I'll just say it real quick. I see the United Nations as a big, big top heavy organization that does not really necessarily listen to the needs of the individual members of the United Nations. They all vote as a block. And the problem is, is if you're not one of the countries that agrees with what the block says, you're not, it doesn't matter. You, you, you have to accept that the will of the United Nations is the law and you are basically stuck, even if you don't want to enforce it in your own country. 
Um, but that's that. Okay. All right. I don't want to get too much into that. I am going to be playing some World of Warcraft later uh, today. I do know, that, as I said, some people do enjoy the game. So it's going to be a lot easier to cover the game. I did fix the night bot for my channel to do like it used to do every so often. Announce the um, how to join the Discord page. Because so many people don't even know how to get on my Discord page. The link is still there. It's just that no one seems to know how to get there. Um, so I want to get night back night bought back on the payroll. So I went ahead and I set up night bought again. Uh, so every 15 minutes it would be able to let you know about the documentary, the donation, and the um, PayPal link. So that you guys can um, keep kept abreast like you used to be. Um, and of course, Lomi still has her night bought. Her night bot is more of, you want to describe it? It's more of a, just a moderator position that just keeps everybody in line. Right. So it doesn't go through and announce anything. Whereas Michelle's night bot doesn't serve as a moderator position, but does the announcements every so often. The two night bots go together <laughs> when we're live streaming on both channels. <coughs> so if you see on Lummy's live streams, Nightbot telling you to go check out the documentary or to do that, that means that you can also be sure that the show is on Welcome to My World as well. And uh, a lot of people did enjoy yesterday's video, live stream with People of Peace. Um, people originally had asked me if I was going to have a Wednesday and People Peace really wanted to cover it. And I was did not want to cover him by myself with him because he would talk for three plus four or five hours. And there was no way in hell I was going to sit through five hours of listening to him droning on and on and on and on and on. So I said, in the end, I did my own version of Hypono. I said, I'm sorry. Quit. Quit on Skype. Please forgive me. <laughs> I, I have to be honest. I could not deal with people peace after that. I was just, oh, this is too much. I think a lot of people were too. So what we're going to do one on Saturday this week. I don't know. What are we going to do tomorrow? After I get home from the laps. I don't know. Are we going to do a World of Warcraft tonight? Yes. Which character? Well, I gotta, I gotta get Vanya up. I gotta get Bashara up. And um, and Bashara um, really is gonna be needed. Is she is is Bashara on the modern world or the old world? I think she's in the modern one. Okay, so she's in Alliance on Modern. Wow. Yeah. And then you're playing another one that's Alliance Mage on Classic. Wow. Yes. Okay. And then you're playing a Drain Eye on Modern. Wow. Yes. <laughs> but sh I don't know if I'm going to keep the Drain Eye. I don't know. I went. I, I get rid of my Torrin. Except the one on, on Globulus. I kept that one, but me and Skynet haven't been playing together since that initial playing on Globulus. So I have no idea um, when we're going to play together again. And if you want to join me and play with me on Modern WoW, I play on um, Thunderlord. Uh, which is East Coast Modern WoW server. If you want to join me on Classic WoW, I play on Wistfall. So if you want to find me on either server, that's where you find me. Right now, my characters are both in 
their respective home turfs. Vanya is in either Goldshire or Stormwind. Usually it's Goldshire. Bikela likes to stay at the Wayfarer's Rest inside of the Silver Moon Mall, as I call it. That way, for as the mall goes, it's which is actually not a mall, but it's actually a city, walled city. But um, I think I see it as a mall because of the way it's built. Um, also, there's a fair uh, going on until live until December 9th in Agrimar. Yeah, so in words, I gotta go through the portal to get to Agrimar. To a fairgrounds event. Uh, yeah, I really, I don't really like our grandma that much. I've been through it once, and I honestly, I don't want to go back. <laughs> Eventually, I'm going to have to sooner or later, because you got to have to go to our grandma or go to the ghost lands to get to start. Moving on and, and advancing into the next level of going against actual real alliance players. And uh, so, yeah, that's what we're going to need to do. I want to get I want to get the kill up to up to 21st. Um, I think once she can actually earn her mount, uh, I think she'd be better off. I'm actually seriously I'm looking for um, getting her a horse. Um, not, not a stallion. I mean, not, not a war horse. I mean, I'm talking about more like a standard farm horse. Because, like Patty has. You know, that's, hers is a mare war horse, farm horse. For Bacala, I went to the Wellhead, um, dress up studio thingy. And I put her on a, a brown horse. And she looked absolutely stunning. Uh, and so that's what I'm going to do. I want to get her all nice and fixed up so she looks really good. Well, anyway, um, for right now, um, I think we've covered pretty much what we got to cover. But I want to thank you all for watching this. And please, don't forget, you can join me on WOW. Modern, if you go to... Uh, Thunderlord and go to the and play it as a Blood Elf or and then you can meet me in Silver Moon at the Wayfarer's Rest or I can meet you at the Sunspire. I don't have a problem getting to the Sunspire. If you want to play with me as a human on Classic WoW you can join me at the um, Goldshire Inn uh, or if you want to play with me, my character, Vashara in Modern WoW, you can join me on Thunderlord at the Goldshire Inn as well. Uh, so yeah, I'm there. Those are where I play right now. As far as my glob globu uh, Globulus server account, well, I haven't really played it lately. I do have it. It's just I haven't played it much. Since Skynet didn't play with me, or stopped playing with me, I don't know why. He was busy, obviously, with his own personal real life uh, thing. But uh, I do want to get a few more people in WoW. Uh, we can work together against certain um, adversaries. I do want to get into Wistfall and Classic. And the problem is, with Wistfall, is those monsters that look like stone beings are so powerful uh, and so aggressive that it really takes a mob a melee of people to go ahead and defeat them. You cannot defeat them by yourself. Forget it. You're not going to be able to defeat them on your own. My mage can't do it. She can't do it. My priestess uh, which is in modern WoW, if she went back at the time of classic WoW, could not do it. Pekela could barely do it. Um, 
if she was to go into Wispell. She, in classic, she could barely defeat those guys. Uh, so, clearly, I need to kind of develop and get together my own little group that can go through and beat these guys. I do want to check out the other um, parts of uh, World of Warcraft. Azeroth, Eastern Kingdoms, and the Western Kingdoms. So, all right, guys. That's it for now. That's enough talking. Um, I'll see you guys later on, okay? Bye-bye. Bye-bye, everybody.